and i once again thank melissa and the organizers for giving me this opportunity and best of luck for the conference happy so before i start uh, greetings from uh, homes on uh, goats on country uh, uh, kerala from where, where i belong as well as our institute uh, amrita institute of medical sciences uh, based in cochin in kerala well the, in the next 15 minutes i would like to primarily focus on uh, the various uh, complications uh, even though most of us know that ebus is a relatively safer procedure but at times uh, there is a margin of nearly 1 percentage chance of various complications so i would be primarily discussing about the what are the potential complications you might face uh, when you are performing uh, these procedures and in case if you happen to mess with these complications how to tackle it and i will also be sharing few practical tips to prevent these complications so uh, in terms of uh, uh, the literature regarding ebus or eus or eusb we have n number of uh, uh, articles which have been pu published but in terms of the complications associated with this procedure very minimum number of case reports are there so as i said before both ebus and eus is relatively a safer procedure even in frail patients and it can be performed in patients who are taking clopidogrel as well so uh, first and foremost i'll be touching in brief about the first uh, major uh, study which was uh, published from japan in the year 2013 this is a randomized controlled uh, trial in which they included mul multiple centers uh, and they pulled together uh, close to 7300 patients who had undergone ebus and uh, uh in this particular study uh, the overall complication rate of ebus is 1.23 percentage among which the most predominant complication was damage to your ebus scope along with that the other notable complications were various uh, infections like uh, uh, mediastinitis pneumonia pericarditis and cyst infection and septicemia were also reported and in almost like 50% of the cases uh, there was mild bleeding which was managed relatively easily moving on from the japanese literature to the the european one uh, this was published again in late 2014 this uh, compared to the japanese literature this particular study incorporated both ebus and us uh, data and they had close to 14000 patient uh, uh, enrolled in which uh, the 14000 patients of eus and 2600 patients of uh, ebus procedures were uh, enrolled in this particular study and even in the european study also the amount of complication was almost between 1 to 1.5 percentage and the the type of complications is almost similar to the japanese study moving on from uh, the japanese from japanese to european and from there to the indian uh, literature this was published in late 2017 this is uh, from uh, the pgi chandigarh which enrolled close to 1000 uh, patients uh, of ebus tbna and uh, compared to the international literature according to this particular study the, the overall complication rate was around 5 percentage now let's see what are the different uh, uh, kinds of complications uh, which you can uh, tentatively face uh, when you deal with these procedures so as it was been mentioned in the previous lectures ebus tbna can be performed in different ways it can be performed in conscious under conscious sedation just like how you so uh, uh, today during the live cases most of the cases were performed uh, under conscious sedation the same procedure can be performed uh, under general anesthesia as well the difference is that when you perform this procedure under general anesthesia both the bronchoscopist as well as the patient will be much more comfortable compared to performing under conscious sedation but in a resource limited setting like in india i would prefer to do this procedure under conscious sedation just to reduce the amount of the cost and when you perform this procedure under conscious sedation most often a hospital admission is not required and you can significantly cut down the cost of procedure and moreover the patient can go back to the hospital go back home even in the same day itself now if you are doing this procedure under conscious sedation what all uh, precautions you have to take first and foremost you should have a, a dedicated nursing staff who is uh, uh, assigned to monitor the level of sedation and if you are giving a proper fall be careful and uh, uh, you should have a dedicated nursing staff uh, uh, who mo serially monitors the the level of sedation uh, we generally practice using an ramsey sedation scale and uh, 
uh, I give metasolam and fentanyl for my patients and make sure that you should have the reversal agent for metasolam and fentanyl that is flumacinal and naloxone in place whenever you are doing this procedure. So moving on from the sedation induced complications to the complications associated when you are performing the EBUS intubation. EBUS intubation means introducing the EBUS scope through the vocal cords into the trachea. So compared to your bronchoscope, uh, the EBUS scope has got a forward angulation. Your Fuji scope has got a 10 degree angulation. The Olympus scope has got a 35 degree angulation and the Pentex one has got a 45 degree angulation. So uh, the scope is angled. So whenever you are performing this EBUS guided intubation, introducing the EBUS scope, uh, make sure that the scope has to be held in a neutral position so that your cords are uh, not been damaged. Moving on from there into the TBNA associated complications. Uh, this is the, one of the most commonly noted, especially when you introduce a needle through the uh, working channel of the EBUS scope. So most often uh, what we might face is that at times the needle can break when you are introducing uh, it into the lymph node. Uh, it can cause pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, mediastinitis, and rarely pericarditis. As well as if you are planning to puncture an iota or a pulmonary artery, like a trans aortic or a trans pulmonary artery puncture, be, make uh, sure that uh, your center should have adequate backup because uh, if something goes wrong, it has to be managed. So uh, bleeding is a rare complication. Uh, it majorly happens in when you're puncturing a major blood vessel as well as uh, a rare another rare complication is an intramural hematoma, especially when you do a transpulmonary uh, puncture. And another notable issue is airway edema, especially if you're doing this procedure on a patient with hyperactive airway uh, disorder, uh, be careful about airway edema as well. Among all these complications, the most significant and the most costly complication is the damage of your EBUS scope. So, uh, this is a case of a 36 year old female who, uh, uh, this is a CT showing a, a media, you can see a mediastinal lymph node over here, which was sampled using a, a EBUS TBNA. And uh, so apparently there was a confusion whether this was a solid lesion or a cystic lesion. So this was a cystic lesion, which was punctured. And uh, after three days of the procedure, patient reported with uh, the fever uh, and uh, malaise. So we did a follow-up CT, CT scan, which showed a significant increase in the size of the lesion. So this was a cyst which was punctured and became secondary infection came uh, inside that and the patient had to undergo subsequent thoracotomy to take it out. So the take-home point is that whenever there is a cystic lesion, try to avoid puncturing it because there is a, always a chance for you introducing a secondary infection into the cyst or else through the tract, the infection can migrate into the mediastinum causing mediastinitis. So as much as possible, try to avoid puncturing a cystic lesion. Now, mediastinitis, as I mentioned before, if there is a cystic lesion, try not to touch it. And in case if you're uh, puncturing a cystic lesion, be sure that uh, during the procedure and after the procedure, the patient has to be on adequate antibiotics. Mediastinal fistula is also another, uh, another rare complication which occurs uh, when you're performing uh, uh, EBUS or EUS. Another complication is uh, a formation of a nodular lesion at the site of uh, TBNA. Again, this is also an extremely rare stuff uh, in which this was the site of the needle puncture and later on after a few days, the patient had presented with cough and uh, you can see there is a nodular lesion over here. Another issue is uh, esophageal perforation when you're doing uh, US uh, uh, B. But again and again, I would like to emphasize the point that all these are extremely rare complications. And uh, among all the, uh, the complications which I mentioned before, the damage to the EBUS scope is one of the most common and the most expensive complication for your department. So it can occur at various steps. Uh, first and foremost, it can occur when you are puncturing the working, uh, puncture due to the puncture of the working channel, damage of the distal uh, covering. Uh, at times, if your technician is not handling the scope very well, you can you are bound to damage your EBUS scope. So this is uh, the photograph of our uh, bronchoscope and ebuscope, which was damaged in 2016 and 2018 due to the patient bite. Especially this complications tends to happen when you're performing this procedure under conscious sedation. At any time, the bite block can get dislodged or else the patient can bite. So be careful. The person who is handling the bite block should be extremely cautious 
otherwise the patient is bound to spit it out and your scope might get damaged the another issue which you might face is the damage to your ultrasound uh, probe uh, so this is an image which showed uh, uh, the damage to the ultrasound probe and uh, your vision is ultrasound probe and the camera is damaged and the your vision is uh, compromised again uh, uh, this is an image uh, the previous image which i showed was the damage of the ebus scope and how to prevent it use a bite block as much as possible and the person who is handling the bite block should be very cautious about it the other complication which you might face is uh, damage to the working channel of the ebus scope uh, this gen uh, generally happens uh, when uh, uh, the needle comes out uh, of the sheath uh, uh, during insertion as i mentioned before the scope ha has to be handled in a proper way it has to be stored at, uh, in a proper place it should be hang in place not like this whenever you are using balloon also you should be very cautious uh, uh, that you are not puncturing the balloon so in our hospital we have performed this in unpublished data we have uh, done close to more than 1000 cases of ebus and uh, uh, our complication rate is also uh, i would say less than 1% uh, and the, the type of complication is almost uh, similar to the other uh, studies which has been published uh, but we had uh, uh, one case of uh, scope damage due to the patient bite and the twice we had to send the scope for repair due to the damage of the optics so how to avoid scope damage uh, uh, the first and foremost uh, you have to know that ebus is a teamwork it is not solely about the bronchoscopist or the interventional pulmonologist you have the people along with you has to be trained adequately to handle the scope to handle the needle and restore it and clean it adequately so first and foremost um, before inserting your tbna needle you have to make sure that uh, you have to check the needle whether it is working properly whether the guide sheath is coming out or not whether the locking system is working properly or not it has to be checked probe or the camera so whenever you are inserting a tbna needle make sure that the scope is held in neutral position and also take in order to do this avoid uh, using your thumb uh, at the on the liver take off your thumb and ensure that the guide just like how you have you can see in this image the guide sheath should be well outside the uh, the ebus scope and uh, so that you won't damage the ultrasound probe or else the camera so this is how it is done uh, uh, the this is the guide sheet the guide sheet will be well outside uh, the the ebus scope and so that your uh, this is ultrasound uh, probe which is not been damaged so the guide sheet should be well outside before uh, advancing the needle and then once the guide sheet is out loc locate the, the needle Uh, unfortunately this video is not playing uh, so locate the needle so suppose if this is a lymph node first and foremost the guide sheet uh, locate the lymph node introduce your tbn needle the guide sheet should be well outside and then gradually advance your tbn needle into the scope so to conclude my talk uh, as i mentioned uh, throughout my presentation ebus is a procedure which is not purely about hitting a node it is much more than that Uh, it can be used uh, uh, not only for diagnosis of a malignancy or an infection it can be used for staging and it has it, it can be used as a multi modality tool for various other purposes also and uh, complication even though my uh, the uh, in the past 15 minutes i was uh, emphasizing about complications uh, but i would say that most of these complications are extremely extremely rare except for the damage of the scope which has to be taken care of adequately and uh, if there is a cystic lesion try not to puncture it and if you are puncturing it make sure that the patient has to be on uh, antibiotics damage to the ebus scope is one of the most common complication which uh, for which adequate care has to be given and like how i mentioned before ebus is not a single man show it is a teamwork and uh, the team includes uh, your bronchoscopy staff uh, uh, and then the nursing staff both of them has to be adequately trained how to handle the tbn needle how to clean and sterilize the scope it's extremely important because the damage can happen at all these levels 
So um, moreover, as I mentioned before, again, that your, your EBUS team uh, encompasses uh, a team of the pathologists, nursing staff, and uh, the radiologist also at times has to be involved. And most of the cases of EBUS, especially if you're dealing with a malignancy, it has to be discussed in a multidisciplinary tumor board uh, prior to concluding or giving a conclusive evidence to the patient. So the overall purpose of my talk is not to panic any one of you about EBUS because as I mentioned before, EBUS is a relatively safer procedure with a bare minimum complication of between 1 to 1.5 percentage. So EBUS or EUS or EUSB, yes, three of them are relatively safer procedures which can be performed uh, by a person who is having adequate skill set in bronchoscopy and who has subsequently performed at least 15 to 20 EBUS uh, uh, um, under a, a, a good setup can easily perform it. it. So it's not being considered nowadays as a major intervention. It can be performed by most of the pulmonologists. Thanks a lot for your patient listening.